Hello, welcome to a quick video lesson here on synthetic division. This is an alternative to polynomial long division. This is kind of like a shortcut. I'm going to show you how to use the synthetic long division procedure to factor a given polynomial. I'm going to look at one example here. This one is a cubic function. It's got a degree of three. What I'm going to do is show you how to use the synthetic division process to factor this thing fully. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look for a value I'm going to call that value b, and this is a special value that's going to make my function equal to zero. This is going to help us determine what the factor is that I'm going to pull out of this polynomial. And I'm going to use what's called the integral zero theorem to only really focus on this negative six. I'm going to say, well, if I test factors of negative six, that should help me find my overall factor that I can pull out of this polynomial. What I can do is I can just look at positive, negative, one, two, three, and six. Those are all factors of negative six. This is something you'll develop with time. You kind of get a sense, uh, an intuition of, you know, what numbers will and will not make this thing zero. I always like to start on this end of the spectrum. Nobody wants to, you know, cube six or even to the power of four or five in some of these problems. So I tend not to focus on those factors. I tend to start on the lower end. In this video, I won't show you the trial and error process. I actually know that, that two is a factor, so I'm just gonna start with two. I'm gonna put two into my function. Wherever you see an X, I'm putting two. I'm gonna do two to the power of two, remember, first before multiplying by two. There's a common mistake there. You'll see that you end up with eight plus eight minus 10 minus six, which will give you zero. So what this tells me is that since I get zero, x minus two is a factor. That's something I, I showed you in, a, in an earlier video. If you are curious as to how I made that conclusion, feel free to pop into that video and jump back into this one. Since x minus two is a factor, what this tells me is that if I take my original function and I pull out x minus two, I've got x minus two times whatever's left, and that should be equal to my original function. Now, because I took out a binomial with an x term with a degree of one, I should be decreasing the power of my polynomial by one. So whatever I'm gonna get is going to be a quadratic expression. So at this point, this is where you would normally jump into polynomial long division, which is you know not very well received. A lot of people have a lot of distaste for that procedure. So I'm gonna show you the synthetic division process. So what you do with synthetic division is you set up a table that looks like this. And in this table, what I have is the coefficients for my original polynomial. You can see here I had a 1 in front of the x cubed, a 2 in front of the x squared, minus 5x, and a negative 6. I put those in the table in the first row. On the left side of this vertical line, what I have here is a negative 2. This negative 2 comes from the ending of the factor that I picked. So the factor it shows was x minus 2. I'm going to take that minus 2 stick it on the left side of the table. I've got a subtraction sign and a multiplication sign here, and I'll show you why that is in just a moment. So that's the way you want to set up your table. This method is kind of tricky to remember how you set it up, because it's kind of arbitrary in the way that it, that it is arranged. So the first thing you do is you take your first coefficient, that one, and you bring it straight down underneath a horizontal line. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that right here. What I do is I take this one, and I multiply using this time sign, by the number up here, which you would remember is that second half of that factor that I chose. And what I do is I take the result of that product and I move it up above the horizontal line on a diagonal underneath the second coefficient. So I had a two there. I've got the result of my multiplication, which would be negative two. And I'm going to subtract those two numbers. So that's what the subtraction sign represents. So I've got two minus negative two, uh, which we know is four. That's sort of the procedure. I'm just gonna repeat that over and over again. You're gonna take the result here, you're gonna multiply by your original factor of negative two, and you're gonna place the result of that underneath the next coefficient. You're just gonna repeat that over and over again. So four times negative two is negative eight. I'm gonna subtract negative five minus negative eight, that should give me positive three. Same thing, three times negative two would give me negative six, and when I subtract those two, negative six minus negative six, I'm gonna add six here and get zero. This is important, that's a remainder of zero. You should get a remainder of zero in this case because remember we chose a factor that will make our original polynomial zero when we substitute in that two that we chose. Now here's where something kind of special happens. What you have here are the new coefficients of your quotient, which is the result of your, your division problem. So if you think back to what I set up here, if we're gonna take our original polynomial, we're gonna break it down into our factor, and because we took out one x, our result is going to decrease by one in our exponent. So I should have an exponent of two. What I got in the first slot of my chart here is the coefficient on that x squared. In the next slot, I've got the coefficient on x, 
and in the last slot I've got the coefficient on my x to the 0 or my no x term. So what I should have here is x squared plus 4x plus 3. I've got no remainder. So I can represent that by saying the results 1, 4, 3 are our coefficients of our, our quotient, which is just the result of our long division problem. And so what I can say is that our original polynomial can be expressed as the factor that I chose times the quadratic that I ended up with as a result of my synthetic division. Now you might be keen and notice that this quadratic expression can be factored further. That can be done very easily using a variety of trinomial factoring methods. I use the sum product method. Two numbers that add to get four, multiply to get three. You'll see that that's one and three. I write those after an x, just like this. And that should be the result of my factoring problem. As you can see, I factored this thing fully. I've got a product of three binomials, and I've successfully factored my original polynomial. Awesome, thanks for watching.